Yeah. So here you can see the physics render. There are mainly lines. Um, and how it works is that uh, when uh, you paint something, we have a we use the Bresenham line rasterizer algorithm to find out what world the, the, the each part of the line is in. So you can just whenever you cross from the back wheel to the front wheel, you can just stop drawing that line and start drawing another line. And again, we actually update everything every frame. Oh, the static physics are updated whenever you paint, and the mobile physics are updated every frame, which is not a very effective way to do it, granted, but we're GPU bound by far, so this really isn't an issue. Um, and for the editor, the thing we noticed quite early is that in order to try to see what works with this, we need to really quickly be able to get stuff going. So. If I want to say just add an image, it doesn't work. <laughs> just a second. Oh yeah, that's true. If I want to just add an image, I just pick the image and load it in, and then if we create a texture for us, which means we don't have, uh, we we can take any non power two issues and we can take any formats. Then we just compile everything because, quite frankly, dry, running everything to a manual compile compile step before getting to work on it, it's just a load of time that's sunk into your own places. Yeah, so the levels are essentially just images placed around and also the physics. <coughs> Since uh, we don't use any special partitioning on the physics, we can essentially just move it around while we play the game and it just works. Uh, And I mean, it's really simple. They snap to each other. And if you want to delete the line, just move it together and it dis disappears. You can also do boxes if you want to, but they don't really work. And in order to facilitate, since we didn't use any art of our own when we made this game originally, we didn't have to worry about how we were going to fit it into the levels because well, it hadn't taken care of for us. But lately we have um, done this debug mode that essentially just renders the physics and then you can export those images uh, to a separate file so you can just paint over that afterwards. So yeah, and of course only using lines is a bit of a hassle because in a case like this when you have a, a solid geometry and you, if you walk inside that and but walk away. I mean, right now it doesn't use any sort of temporal coherence. So if you actually are inside of a physics object when when the frame starts, then it's just going to try to separate it. It's, it doesn't really bother where you have been before, what velocities you have stored. It just tries to separate it, and that doesn't really work in the end. I mean, we're going to have to solve this problem in one way or another, but that fully depends on what kind of levels we want to make. So far, we haven't really had any levels with a lot of solid geometry. And what more? Uh, yeah, you is not an artist. I'm not an artist. Uh, so we're probably gonna either try to hire some more people who are more inclined to do art, or we're gonna try to come up with some crazy rendering technologies that we feel represent the core of the game. It's gonna be a lot more abstract and not very realistic, but we're going to do, we're also going to have to rework the editor, depending on how we release this, we haven't decided yet. I mean, if we're just going to release everything as open source, then it doesn't really matter how the editor works, because people who are interested in using it will use it. But if we're going to try to do something larger scale, we're going to have to do something a bit more user-friendly. But on taking the art styles we work with, this is sort of a sketchy art style. Uh, it's inspired by Don Ken, if anyone's seen the guy. He's drawing monsters on uh, post-it notes. But we also talked about maybe adding color. This is more inspired by the movie Secret of Kells, if anyone's seen it. And yeah, that's ex that's essentially backwards. Any questions?